threw out the drive home. Owen just keeps on looking at through his peripheral view, trying to gauge my emotions, my facial expressions, my mood. Well, I'm in a pissy mood right now. That punch was satisfying while it lasted. Now, I won't be able to drive to school until my baby is spotless again. This just sucks. Maybe I'll clean it when we arrive at home. Sometime before the five-minute mark ended, he broke the silence. So, are you going to tell me what was the reason why they wrote those words on your car? I shrugged and he sighed afterwards. They thought I was flirting with Sean. Maybe because they saw me earlier sit and talk to him in the library before my second period started. I told him about what happened and he nodded after I finished. No wonder they thought you were a slut. Rumor does spread fast when you are popular here. They must have known I am staying with you while they saw you talk with Sean. This is surprising. He's not angry. Why are you not angry? About me sitting beside Sean and talking to him. He smiled and answered while driving his car. That is because you told me that nothing is going on between you two. Remember? Oh right. Now I remember. I nodded and saw that we have arrived at the house. I asked him about the intruder's situation. He told me that he was asleep the whole day while he looked after him and worked at the same time. Well, I hope he won't be too disappointed when he finds out that I took his suicide pill from his mouth. I told Owen that I will question him once I was done cleaning my car. I do not like the color of the lipstick they used to vandalize my car. If it were red, I might have drove my car despite the words written on it. But no, it had to be hot pink. Who wears that color anyway? He nodded and went on inside the house, while I waited for Bria to arrive and park my car. Surprisingly, Bria and my car arrived in tip-top shape. Did she go through a car wash or something? She parked the car, got out and said two words before going inside the house. Car wash. Well, thank you. I went after the two and found them waiting for me in the kitchen. Thanks Bria. For having my car cleaned. She smiled and nodded at the fridge. Ugh, they want dinner. I raised an eyebrow. Do I look like your personal chef? Before Bria could say anything, Owen beat her to it. Jeon, you promised yesterday that you will cook dinner tonight, since we ordered takeout instead of you cooking. Oh right. I almost forgot about that. I snapped my fingers in annoyance, because I forgot something I shouldn't. Sorry, I forgot about that. Blame the bitch who drew on my baby. Fine, I'll cook something up. Can you two check on the guy in the basement to see if he's still breathing or not? They nodded and went out to go to the basement. I started cooking dinner, some quick stir-fried veggies and some meat to go with it. I got everything I needed from the fridge and pantry and started cooking, while thinking of what to ask the guy down in the basement. I need to have a strategy in what to ask, or he won't cooperate and answer my questions. Maybe that's why Bria is here. Man, it's nice to have a friend that is a detective. I finished cooking everything up. Now, I just need to bring them down to the others. I placed it on a tray along with some lemonade, plates and utensils before going to the basement. When I went in, the guy was already awake and was struggling against his restraints. Sorry dude, but I made sure those were extra fit on you. I placed the tray on a nearby table and told the others that they can eat ahead of me while I asked him a few questions. They didn't agree. They wanted to hear what the guy has to say for himself. I sighed and let them do what they wanted to do. I stepped up a few feet from the guy and told him to stop struggling. 
You'll only get hurt if you insist on struggling calm down. We won't kill you unless you lie to my face. He stopped struggling but his face is a bit contorted. Is he? Trying to take the suicide pill out of his teeth. My suspicion was confirmed when his eyes went wide with the realization that his escape plan was foiled. You really thought that you could get away that easily after the stunt you just pulled. It won't be that easy. Anyone would be able to see the genuine fear that is currently adorning his face. His teeth were chattering as if they were cold. His whole body was starting to shake from fear. I don't know if it is fear of dying at my hands or fear of dying from someone else's hands. Either way, he is not in good shape. This is going to be taxing to the mind of everybody in the room, including me. Look, I will not kill you just answer my questions with nothing but the truth. The worst thing that will happen to you is going to jail for trespassing. So, tell me, who are you working for? The guy finally stopped trembling and somehow decided to answer my question. I don't know I swear, I really don't know her I was hired to kill you. My manager doesn't divulge the client's identity. Only the next victim and how the client wants them to be killed. I raised an eyebrow. You're an assassin. Then why were you drunk when you came in last night? How did you find out about the labyrinth beyond that door? I was scouting the area when I found a bottle of scotch in the tree house. I wouldn't paw the opportunity to taste expensive alcohol, and since this kill was not time sensitive, I took my sweet time before deciding to kill you. I already know the layout of the house, as well as the security in this place. I was sober enough to have confidently killed you. If only I knew there was a trap waiting for me, if I used this wretched maze. I don't know why I listened to my manager when he said to use this path. He told me you were oblivious of this path. I smiled and stepped closer to him. I bent down to his ear. I whispered, You're not the only assassin in this room. I stood back up and looked straight down at him. His eyes widened at the realization that he was looking at a fellow assassin. Your moniker? I asked him. I was curious of his identity. The drunken tiger. Now, I remember his face and why he was drunk. I'm guessing you don't recognize me without my mask, but what the hell? You're going to die anyway so why not? Let me introduce myself to you, drunken tiger. I turned back to take out my contacts and throw them into the trash bin. I still have a pair of them in my bedroom anyway. I turned back to let him look into my eyes and took out one of my daggers for him to see. I made sure that he sees the letters engraved on the dagger. Lady Violet. It can't be. She had blonde hair. I shrugged. It was a wig. I was being hunted down, even before I became Lady Violet. A disguise was necessary for my survival. Let's start again, shall we? I pressed the cold hard metal of my dagger on his face to draw blood. He looked at the dagger on his face and gulped at the countless possibilities of his untimely death. He nodded and winced when the dagger dug deeper into his flesh. I stood up along with my dagger. I smiled. Okay, kindly tell me the reason why I am getting killed by an assassin. If so, why couldn't your client find a better one to send me of to hell? He took a deep breath before answering me. My manager told me that we were lucky to score this client because you were no longer around to get all the clients for yourself, especially since rumor has it that the tin man is dead. I really wanted to meet him just once. He paused but the sight of my lovely dagger made him continue his story. He cleared his throat and continued. He said that you were the victim, because the client has had enough of you flirting with every rich, handsome guy in town. 
I had to blink my eyes a few times to make sure I wasn't dreaming or anything. Seriously. I laughed out loud, not caring if they thought I was going insane or something. That bitch reason is insane, not me. Everyone was looking at me, like I had grown two heads all of a sudden. Who? Sorry about that. It's just that, I never knew how to flirt, so, if they thought I was flirting, maybe I was doing it unconsciously. It's such a stupid reason to kill me. Owen cleared his throat to ask, who else was I flirting with? I looked at him with a are you seriously asking that? Face. He nodded and I sighed in defeat at their stupidity. I have never intentionally flirted with anyone well. Maybe except for Sean, since I needed to test out my theory about his sister, but apart from him, no one, and I think whoever hired him also thinks that I flirted with you, oh, handsome and rich guy in town. I laughed again, because I couldn't stomach the fact that I am being killed because of jealousy. Then again, I always received those kinds of jobs from jealous husbands and wives back in Louisiana. So, I'm not surprised at all. I looked at Drunken Tiger and asked him another question. Did your manager receive a map of Labyrinth from the client? He nodded in earnest, and I'm seeing the effects of the poison from the dagger are already starting to kick in. I need to finish this interrogation before he realizes he's been poisoned, or worse, dead. How much were you paid? He said that the client paid half a million in advance and will pay the other half once I'm dead. Well, not scared to spend a few Benjamins on killing me. I also asked him when was he assigned the job, when he started to scout me in my house. What were the things he found out about me and my house? He answered all of my questions quite truthfully. The poison is already doing damage to his eyesight. What is happening to me? I can barely see you. Did you inject me with something else besides those sedatives earlier this morning? I told him no and that he was just being a bit drowsy and faint from hunger and thirst. I told him that I'll be giving him food and water after we finish interrogating him. He nodded and waited for me to ask more questions. I only have one more question to ask. Lastly, who is your manager? He was almost out of it, but he quickly set the drowsiness aside and gave me a name. Not so much a name of a person, but a name of an assassin. Scarlet Witch. He just took his last breath after he gave me that name. I should have known that old hag was behind this. I'm going to have to track her whereabouts to know who I am dealing with here. Owen, where did they have their last camping trip? Owen took out his phone and opened it to look for something on it. After he found what he was looking for, he gave the phone to me. Well... I am certainly going to have fun going to this place. Especially since I am looking for the one, Bakehouse Scarlet Witch in the world of assassins. Well, what a complete coincidence. This is the last place where I saw the Scarlet Witch. And I'd bet good money that she is still around there somewhere. I nodded and told them to eat dinner before we dispose of the body. Owen took the tray, and we went up to the kitchen to finally eat our dinner. June, you never told us that your dagger had poison on it. I thought, I cut her train of thought. You thought what, Bria? That I'm through killing people. For the money, yes, I'm through with taking assassination jobs. But if it means that I get to live, better other people die than me. You don't know how hard it is to be an assassin. It is either you kill or you will be killed. So, I'm sorry if you thought I won't kill another person. I'm sorry if I didn't tell you I'm sorry if I still have twisted morals. I took my share of the food and locked myself inside my weapons room to eat dinner.
They don't know how hard it is to be an assassin. How hard it is to trust others not to kill you. I ate in complete silence, while thinking up a reason for a surprise visit to the Scarlet Witch. I didn't exactly leave on good terms with her. She wanted me to be her disciple, not Henry's. She tried to scout me when I crossed paths with her. I showed her what Henry taught me and she retreated, but I know she is out for blood. Especially since she knows what I look like underneath the mask. I always use on my missions. She was using a katana, a Japanese sword, when she split my mask open and revealed what I looked like. I was not using any disguise during my missions, so she knew my real face. Maybe that's why she accepted the job. But I want to know who is out to kill me for a petty reason. I'm going to the campsite alone. I'm not bringing anyone that might have ideas of holding me back from killing anyone when it becomes necessary. I don't need those kinds of baggage with me. I finished my dinner and went back to put the dishes in the dishwasher and go to sleep. But fate decides to fuck up my life at every turn it gets. I saw Owen and Bria still talking in the kitchen. I hurried to put my dishes in the dishwasher before they could corner me and talk to me. I don't like to talk whenever I'm pissed because I tend to say things that I really don't mean and I hate that part of me. I hate it whenever I hurt someone close to me with the words that are coming out of my mouth. I was a step away from the door when Owen grabbed my hand and made me sit on his lap. I struggled to get out of his arms because I don't want to talk to them right now. Damn it. Why does he have to be so freaking strong? This is bordering on insane. Why did I have to fall in love with him? Wait, I love him. No, no. Can't be. I didn't entertain the idea any longer, because I am still caged in his arms. I need to get away. Let me go, Owen. I have school tomorrow. I need my sleep. I grunted in frustration when he is still holding me securely in his arms. I pounded my closed fists on his arms because he is grabbing me tightly that it is getting hard to breathe. Take your arms of me, Owen. I can hardly breathe. A moment's hesitation was all I needed. So, when he let his guard down, I got out of his arms and dashed up to my room. I locked it and sat in my bed to process what is happening to me, especially my feelings towards that brute. I'm more of the brute between us. I know that I have been more responsive to him, but I never thought that I would fall for him like this. <clears throat> I can kill a person with no hesitation, but I couldn't decide what to do about my feelings for Owen. I don't know why women are so desperate to be in a relationship. Ugh, I hate being indecisive with things. I really need to sleep this up. I got myself ready for bed when barged inside my room. I remember locking the freaking door, so how in blazes, he held up a key in the air before I could finish my sentence. Let's talk, just you and me. I don't like seeing you like this being so distant and all. It's like we are back to square one. June, we both have come a long way. Don't revert, just talk to me please. I shake my head. I am done talking for the day Owen kindly get out of my room before I go completely berserk on you. And I really don't want that to happen right now. I pointed to the open door and waited for him to get out. He sighed in defeat and went out the door. But before he could fully get out, he said, I'm just here, June, you can talk to me whenever you want. I just want you to know that. And we already took care of the body in the basement. You don't have to worry about Bria. She understood why you did what you did. She was just caught off guard. I looked away and heard the door close. When I know that I was completely alone, my emotions came out cascading like a waterfall. 
I don't know why I am crying like this. Ever since I came here, I've been a complete and utter mess. I sat in my bed, because my knees were starting to buckle, and I need something to support my weight. I cried quietly, because I know that if Owen hears me crying, he will most likely ask me questions, even I don't know the answers to. I lie on my bed, just crying myself to sleep. I'm just so tired today. It has been a roller coaster ride of emotions, extreme ones. I closed my eyes as I was slowly being rocked to sleep by my quiet sobs. I am slowly sinking into the abyss of my dreams. I don't want any dreams tonight. I just want to sleep. But my brain and subconscious had other plans for me. I was sinking to the time my parents died. It kept on repeating on the part where I saw their lifeless bodies beside me. No, why do I have to see this over and over again? Why? There has to be a reason for this. I stopped panicking and looked at my surroundings. And there, at the corner of the room, I saw a rose. A scarlet rose to be exact. Scarlet which was the assassin who killed my parents. And she has come to finish the job. She must have realized during our last encounter. Now, I need to find her more. I need to know if Chase Williams is the one who told her to kill my parents. I need to know the reason for my parents' death. I'm going back to where I last saw her with a vengeance so fierce. She will wish she didn't touch my family in the first place. I was whisked away by my subconscious to another place in another time. From the time I first met Owen, the first time I saw Violet and Annabelle. I saw myself on top of the tree observing them. I went close to the three teenagers. They were talking to themselves with low voices that I could barely hear a word they were saying. Just as I was about to go closer, Owen turned his head back to where I was standing and looked at the trees. He must have heard me go down the tree. He excused himself from the girls, and I was about to follow him. But something made me stay here with the girls. I let Owen follow the sound he heard and I was left with listening to the girls' conversation. Annie, remember what I told you before we came here? Annabelle looked up to Violet and just nodded quietly at her question. She then continued what she was doing quietly, as if trying not to bother Violet. I thought they were friends, best friends, in fact. What am I seeing right now? Violet was called by her parents, and Annabelle was left tending to check their things. I was startled when she stiffened and looked up at me. I had to blink a few times and look behind me to check if there was anyone behind me. There was no one, so she must be seeing me. She tilted her head at me in a questioning manner, not quite sure of what she would say. You're not dead, but why can I see you? I usually see dead people, can you hear me? I raised an eyebrow. She can see the dead and she's asking me if I can hear her. Yes, I can perfectly hear you. Can you? Hear me, that is. She nodded. Well, this is fun. She can see dead. I can talk to the dead. I grabbed this opportunity and asked her a question. Is Violet bullying you? Hurting you physically and emotionally? She stiffened again at my question. What do you mean? And how do you know her name? I shrugged. I know all of your names, except for Mr. and Mrs. Grayson. I know your mom and dad. I know Bria. I know Owen. I know Violet. And I know you, Annabelle. I know you are being bullied. But I do not know who. I also know that you are already dead and this is your memory seeping into my dreams. I do not know how you do that but what I speak is the truth. She was quiet the whole time I said those words. She looked up at me again and asked. Dead. I'm dead.
I sighed and nodded. Though you are alive right now at this moment, you are going to die and I need to know who has been bullying you, hurting you. I'm here to help you get your justice, I'm here to kill the bitch that killed you. Her eyes went as wide as saucers. I didn't let her talk, I continued. You need to help me so I can help you. I'm an assassin so, will you help me? She was about to answer when everything went dark all around me. She disappeared, along with everybody else. I woke up with wide eyes after everything went black. I tried to move my body but failed. I blinked my eyes a few times before trying to move again. No use. I can't move. Why do I have to experience sleep paralysis now, of all days? I calmed myself and let myself go back to sleep. I closed my eyes, but I suddenly opened them when I felt something putting weight on my abdomen area. When I looked down on the area, nothing was there. This is why I hate experiencing sleep paralysis. It fucking hurts big time. I tried to time my breathing so that I will feel less pain and won't get suffocated easily. I waited for a few more minutes before trying again to move. I first tried to move my toes. When I was finally able to move them, I slowly moved the other parts of my body. The heavy weight from earlier was also removed from my body. I sat up on bed and finally took a long breath of fresh air. Wait, fresh air. Didn't I close the windows last night? I got out of bed and went to close the window when I saw a shadow in the distance, running away from the house. I got my laptop and looked at the footage of the surveillance cameras around the house. I checked from the time. I went to sleep to the time I woke up. Someone came in from my window. But how was she able to get in without triggering the alarms of the house? I know for a fact that the alarms should be working. I checked the laptop if the alarms are on and it was on. So why was the alarm not triggered? Did someone hack into the system again? This is getting irritating. I checked and the systems are still intact. I double checked to see if there is a worm in my system but it came out clean. Who could that have been? I don't think I have any answers right now. I checked the time and decided to fully wake up and start my morning. I hopped into the shower, got dressed and went down to prepare breakfast. It was half past six when I finished preparing breakfast. I did not wait for Owen to come down and join me for breakfast. I needed some alone time as much as possible. I decided to stay at a hotel or inn in town to have some alone time to reassess everything that has been going on in my life. Even though I wanted a vacation, I can't abandon my education, especially since I already paid for the tuition. I went up to my room to pack up my stuff inside a duffel bag. I also took a duffel bag full of my daggers that are constantly soaked in poison, guns and ammunition, arrows for my bow and an extra bow for precautionary measures. I also included several containers of different poisons, just in case something comes up. I was almost out of the door when Owen found me and ran to grab my arm. I looked at him and tried to pry my arms away from his grasp. He asked me several times where I am going but I never answered. He eventually gave up and let me go. He will know where I will be going if he reads the note that I left for him on the kitchen counter. I got inside my car and went to find somewhere I could sleep for the next few days, preferably near the campus. I was driving along the tow when something had caught my attention. I saw Chase Williams' car parked at an inn near the town square. He's staying here. Why is he staying here? I don't need to know the specifics of why he is staying here. I continued to drive until I found a quaint little inn near the campus. 
I parked my car and went inside to inquire if they have any available rooms I could rent for a while. Once I went inside, I instantly felt at home. The atmosphere inside the inn is very homey. Something reminds me faintly of how our home felt when my parents were still alive. I went up to the reception table and rang the bell that was on top of it. I had to admire the interior of the inn. It was so. What's the word I'm looking for? Cozy. That's right, cozy and homey. I didn't have to wait that long because a lady who looks like a year or two older than me came out of the room, situated behind the reception table. She greeted me with a smile and said, Welcome to Cozy Homes Inn. We have several rooms that are available for you to stay in tonight. Good timing. I told her that I'll be renting a room for a couple of days. She turned around, got something from a drawer, and turned back to give me something. When I got it, I found that it was a key. A strange-looking key. Strange yet so familiar in a way that I can't describe. I pushed this weird feeling away and said my thanks. She smiled and led me to the second floor of the inn and straight in front of the door to my room. I was given room number eight. When the lady opened the door, my jaw dropped on the floor. It was a rustic homey kind of room with purple accents. Do you always take your customers to rooms with their favorite colors, or is this all a huge coincidence? I asked jokingly. It was a really huge coincidence that she gave me a room with my favorite color. She shrugged and said that she doesn't always do it on purpose. There are times when someone is somehow emitting a sort of aura. I sometimes see them. I sometimes don't you were giving of a purple aura. That's why I gave you this room plus. You have beautiful violet eyes. Dinner is at six. Enjoy your stay here. She didn't get to let me finish because she left immediately after showing me the room. Now that I had a good look at it, the key that she gave me looks strange. Strange but familiar at the same. It is familiar in a way I can't describe. I pushed the feeling away and went to unpack my bags. I unpacked my bags while I left my duffel bag full of weapons untouched. I won't leave them here for fear that they might be discovered. It's best to bring them with me at all times. I'll just hide them inside the back seat. When I finished unpacking, everything except the bag full of weapons, I left the inn. I arrived in class in the nick of time, and I had to explain to the teacher why I was absent last meeting. Other than that, Nothing extraordinary really happened at school. I had my lunch at the school cafeteria and did not find Sean because I don't want to make a fuss right now. Lunch had ended and classes went by in a flash. I was already parking my car in front of the inn when my eyes caught a familiar car parked beside mine. I grunted in frustration. It was Owen's car. How did he find me so easily? I sighed and let fate decide what to do with this moment. I went inside with my duffel bag full of weapons and braced myself for whatever is going to happen. When I got inside, I was instantly crushed in a bear hug. An insanely huge bear hug. I let him do whatever he wants because I am just tired with the drama that comes along with him. Though it hasn't been a day yet, I already miss him. I just inhaled his scent and didn't do anything else. I heard him say sweet nothings into my ear while he was holding me tight. Why is he acting this way? When he was satisfied with hugging me, he let me go. I didn't look at him. I just paw him by and went to my room. I made sure to lock my room. When I went inside before I placed my things on the bed, I grabbed a pillow on the bed and screamed my lungs out while covering my face, just to muffle the sound. 
That was so satisfying. After doing that, I was more calmer than I was before screaming on the pillow. I heard someone trying to get in my room. When he found out that my room was locked, he started banging on the door. He kept on telling me to open the door. I ignored him and put on my noise-canceling headphones on. Getting some alone time is going to be hard when you have someone like Owen, who wants to be in on everything. Whatever. With my noise-canceling headphones, I finished all of my schoolwork and started to read some of the books that are included in the syllabus for my literature class. It was a bit hard to understand since it was poetry. Anyone can have their own interpretation with the poetry that they are reading. I'm having a hard time with that part since I mostly read novels and not poetry. While I was reading a very challenging line from the book, Mother Nature called my name. I stood up, took off the headphones, and went inside the bathroom to pee. I was surprised that it was quiet. Guess Owen finally gave up on banging on the door for me to let him. I got out of the bathroom and noticed a piece of paper tucked under the door. I eyed the piece of paper and tried to stay away from it, but my curiosity won, so I went to pick it up from the floor. I opened it and started to read it. If Owen was trying to tug on my heartstrings, he is succeeding. It was a sort of love letter. Yes, love letter. The letter goes. Dear June, if you are doing this because you wanted space okay, I'll let you do whatever you want. I won't force you to do something you don't want to or you're not comfortable with. I know that you are still adjusting with this whole relationship thing between us. So please, take your time. Just don't take too long. I really wanted to say this to you in person, but I just want you to know that I already love you, and I do not want to lose you nor do I want you to end up with another guy. I'll be waiting for your return at the house. I'm planning on buying a house for the both of us, just us. No one else. With lots of love. Owen hugs and kisses. I smiled at his writing. I even laughed at it because I really never thought that he could be this cheesy. I like this side of him. I chuckle and went back to my seat to finish reading the book. It was about a quarter to six when I finished reading the book, so I changed my clothes and went down to check what is for dinner. The lady at the reception saw me coming down, and she ushered me into another room which I'm going to assume is the dining room. Everything about this inn feels like home. I inhaled a deep breath and exhaled it with great enthusiasm. Dinner arrived and I faintly remember the ones I had back home. When I looked up, the lady was still standing beside my table. I tilted my head in a questioning manner, but she didn't get it because she mirrored my action. I smiled and asked her instead, Is there anything I could help you with? She was startled to hear my question and her cheeks started to blush a deep reddish color. Oh, that would be inappropriate, don't you think? You're a customer here and you want to help me. I was wondering if you remembered me, Guinevere. I was your nursemaid's daughter Electra. Remember playing with me several times when you didn't have a playmate? My eyes went wide when I heard her name. I remember her. Now, I know why everything in this inn feels like home. It has an element of hominess. She must have remembered how her mother would decorate our home back then. Mom and Dad liked her taste in decorations, and they would let her do the decorating of the house because they knew they suck at doing that. She inherited her mother's homey touch when it comes to decorating. How are you? I could hardly recognize you earlier. I'm sorry if I didn't recognize you. Il extra. It has been chaotic recently, and I needed some alone time. She laughed and sat across me. I know I saw what went down in the lobby with Loverboy. Are you a thing? 
because if not, I will snatch him from you. I chuckled. Go ahead just don't come to me crying, if he shuts you down immediately apparently, he's madly in love with me. We both laugh and continue to talk, that I almost forgot the food on my plate. Hey, I made that with all my love for you and you are ignoring it. That's just mean, June. She crossed her arms and pouted at me. I missed her doing that. I couldn't help myself. I pinched her cheeks until she tapped my hands. I always do that every time she pouts at me. I did not want to waste her cooking, so I started to eat the food that is on my plate. I moaned at the flavor of it. It's like the ones her mother made when we were back home. I missed your mom and her cooking. She smiled sadly at my mention of her mother. I know, I miss her too she didn't make it out alive. When your parents were killed do you know who killed them? I just want to know, so she could have her justice. I reached out to her hands, that were clenched together, so tight that they were turning white. If I told you that I am seeking their killer right now, would you believe me? If I told you that I am a killer, would you believe me? Would you be scared if I told you who my other side is? El Actra will answer those questions truthfully for me. She nodded her head and told me her answer. Truthfully, I won't believe you if you told me that you are a killer, nor you are seeking their killer. I don't know what to feel about the third question, since I probably do not know who your other half is. Fair enough. She knew me as someone who doesn't hurt other people, unless they start hurting me. I nodded and proceeded to tell her my secret. If I told this to you, you will keep it with you until the day you die. Bring it to your grave, you understand me. She nodded. I'm an assassin, ill extra. I know the person who killed our parents. And my name as an assassin is Lady Violet. She took about a few minutes to digest what I said before she freaked out. She silently screamed in her seat as an exaggeration because she doesn't believe me. I sighed and continued to eat my dinner while ignoring the laughing El Ectra. It's hopeless to be serious when it comes to friends like her. She snorted and chortled while continued to eat. She can laugh all she wants. I just miss listening to her laugh. No one can laugh like she does. She's stupidly cute that way. She finally calmed down and breathed in a deep breath before realizing that I was serious. You were not kidding, were you? When I ignored her, she made a huge gasping sound. No way are you serious. You can't be the Lady Violet that I've been hearing of for several years. Now she vanished after her manager died from another assassin killing him. I looked up at her when she said that it was an assassin's work that killed Henry. Do you have any idea who killed her manager? She shrugged and said, Rumor says that they have an idea of who but they were not sure because several assassins use what they saw on the scene of the crime. A scarlet rose. I really can't wait to gut her like a fish. Her sins are stacking on each other like blocks. And like blocks, I will tear her down of her pedestal. Thank you. Now I know that she has more sins than what I originally thought. I'm seriously gonna strangle her with my own bare hands. How are you going to find her? She must be hiding, you know. She got some of the sides of my dinner, even after I slapped her hand. I know she has a point, but I have a lead, so I will follow that first before giving up. I changed the subject and El Ectra knew that I didn't want to talk about it in public. We chatted the whole night before we decided to sleep for the night. I will stay for another two days or so so I could fully catch up with El Actra. I found another piece of paper, but this time it is on top of my table, in the shape of an airplane. I smiled and read the letter. 
It was short and sweet. I placed it over my heart before I went to sleep, dreaming of the person who wrote it. Just so you guys know, the letter said, Dear June, Good night. Sweet dreams. Dream of me, because I will dream of you. I love you. With lots of love from your future husband. Owen hugs and kisses. I stayed at the inn for two more days, before finally deciding to back home. I was happy because even though I didn't ask for space and some alone time, Owen happily gave it to me. No questions asked. He also sent letters to me morning, noon, and night. So, I never got bored inside the inn, whenever I didn't have much to do. I told El Ectra that I will be leaving today, and she asked for my address, so that she could visit me from time to time, or whenever she has free time on her hands. I told her my address, while she jotted it down on a piece of sticky notes in her notebook. She checked me out of the inn and we said our goodbyes to each other. For now, at least. I didn't tell Owen that I will be coming back home today, because I wanted it to be a surprise for him. I also planned to cook a delicious dinner for him when I arrive home. I still went to my classes as scheduled so that he wouldn't think that there is anything wrong with me. And since it is already the last day of the school week, I made plans on going to the lake, and to that bitch of a witch. School had passed and I decided to go shopping for some groceries at the local grocery store. As I was strolling in one of the aisles of the store, I heard a couple of girls gossiping on the other side of the aisle, where I was strolling in. Hey, did you hear the latest gossip? Owen and the new bitch split, like for real. Do you think I should go for it? I raised an eyebrow at what I just heard. Who started that rumor? And why do they sound familiar? I listened to their conversation again, and what I heard next made my blood boil like lava from an active volcano. Yeah, said that she was caught cheating on him, with Sean Anderson, no less. How slutty can she get? Really? I never heard of that rumor, even when I was still back in school. I hadn't even talked to Sean the whole time. I decided that I needed some alone time. Mark my words. When I find out who started that damn rumor, I'm going to cut their tongue out, slit their throat, and cut their heads of the top of their shoulders. I continued shopping for the things that I needed to cook something delicious for Owen. When I was done, I went straight for the counter since this store only has one counter and it will forever, before I could get out of here. A group of girls was standing next to the cashier, gossiping about God knows what. Now, I know why the ones gossiping earlier in the other aisle sounded so familiar. They were the girls that I had a scuffle with before I could even enroll at school. They were still talking about how should slut number one approach and seduce Owen into being his boy toy, or in her case, sugar honey. I checked the number of items they had inside their basket and found that they only had several tampons and condoms inside. Well, I thought it was the guy that has to buy his condoms. I guess not. They weren't moving instead. They were just gossiping in front of the counter. Even the cashier didn't notice them, because they were just gossiping there. He should be the one to reprimand these sluts for holding up the line. I cleared my throat, just to get their attention, and to have them move along, so the rest of us, won't be held up in this line, waiting for our turn to pay for what we want to buy. They chose to ignore it. I think they chose to ignore it because the cashier heard it while they were still talking. He asked for their items so he could punch them in already and so that the line would finally move, but they still ignored him. I am getting impatient here, and I do not know how long I could keep my cool. 
I was already clenching my teeth from the sheer annoyance of the situation at hand. When they still had the guts and nerve to keep on ignoring the people around them and kept on gossiping, while everybody else in the line waited for them to fucking pay their items, I just snapped. Will you bitches just pay already? Some of us here have very important things to do at home. More important than gossiping about baseless rumors like you do. They all looked at me at the same time that I almost thought they had rehearsed it or something. And one by one, their eyes widened with shock, all except for one. The bitch who almost ripped my credentials when she found out about Owen staying at my house. Good thing Vanessa wasn't with them. They are really bad influences on her. Scram slut. Can't you see we are in the middle of a conversation over here? Check your surroundings, bitch. Aha, uh -huh. and can't you see that we are in the middle of a fucking line to pay at the counter? How dumb can you be? Can't you pay and then gossip somewhere else? Somewhere where no one will be delayed with having to wait for you to get your fucking priorities straight. I told her seriously, because she might think that I am joking. She looked around her and she saw that what I just said was true, and that they really were holding up the line for everybody to see. She went a deep scarlet hue. All of them did. She gave her items and paid for them. She and her minions left the grocery and we all cheered in happiness. Everybody that was in the line thanked me for making those bitches leave. So did the cashier. I paid for my items and drove back home. I opened the door and went immediately to the kitchen to start cooking dinner. I was almost done when I heard the door open and then close. I hurriedly finished the dinner, cleaned the kitchen, and set the food up in the dining room. I was done with everything when I felt someone hugged me from behind and started to kiss my neck up to my ears. I giggled a bit because I am ticklish from where he is kissing me. I turned around and looked up at him to hug him. I gave him a quick peck on his lips to show him how much I miss him. He smiled and looked at me with so much love and affection that I almost melted. Almost. Looks like someone missed me. Well, I definitely missed someone. How was your few days of solitude, June? I acted like a kid and pretended to think before answering his question. It was fun, but I realized something was missing. Do you know what I was missing? I asked him with a knowing smile on my face. He chuckled lowly and just hugged me while he buried his face in the crook of my neck, inhaling my scent as if I'm a drug that he is addicted to. I know what you were missing, scratch that. I know who you were missing. His raspy voice vibrates throughout my entire system, making me shiver in delight. And who is that? If I might ask. I asked while holding his head in my arms. He took his face off of my neck and held my face in both of his hands. We both know that you missed me, June. Don't deny it. I didn't. And when he saw that I wasn't denying, he slowly inched his face forward until there were only a couple of centimeters of space in between us. He's killing me right now. I couldn't wait for him to come closer. I closed the gap and kissed him. With all of the pent-up emotions that I just discovered, I can't stop myself. Dinner forgotten, we kissed until we needed to stop if we wanted to breathe. But it didn't stop there because Owen started kissing and licking my neck. I tilted my neck a bit to the side, so he could have better access to my neck. And when he'd had enough, he went back to my lips, all the while cupping my ass. I didn't need to be told twice. I jumped in his arms, and he carried me upstairs into my room, and we did what most couples do. Oh, Lala. I can't say I'm refreshed after a whole night of powwow with Owen. 
My whole body is sore, especially my lady bits down there. But waking up and seeing Owen's face early in the morning is something I can get used to doing every morning for the rest of my life. I was observing him as he sleeps, slowly memorizing every detail of his face, as if he is going to disappear in a few minutes if I can't memorize it all. I slowly traced his face from the center of his forehead, all the way down to the tip of his nose, using my left middle finger. I giggled when he kissed my finger, while grinning like an idiot, so early in the morning. Good morning, beautiful. I smiled before shifting onto my tummy and laid on top of Owen's chest. Did I forget to mention that we were both naked? Good morning, handsome. I kissed the tip of his nose. He caught me, trapping me in his embrace, and started to lean forward to kiss me. I avoided his lips while laughing at his face. Ho 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 ho. As much as I would love to be ravished by you, I have plans to track down one of the missing pages of Annabel's diary and tracking down the assassin who killed my parents as well as Electra's mother and the manager of the assassin who tried to kill me will you let me go? He pouted like a kid. Exactly like a kid does a pout. Kids usually pout when they don't like what was being said to them. Obviously, Owen didn't like what he just heard. He didn't like the idea of me getting out of this bed. Okay, but I'm coming with you and no buts and what ifs I'm coming and that's final. It's my turn to pout. Can you shoot a gun? He nodded. Can you kill a person when necessary? Will you listen to my orders? Will you leave me when I tell you to leave me? He took his sweet time thinking and considering my questions because he knows that those are my conditions. He needs to be able to protect himself because I can't protect him all the time. He needs to listen to me because I'm the more experienced when it comes to these kinds of stuff. And most important of all, he needs to leave me when I order him to because I can't go all out when I am worried about him being targeted by my enemy. That would just be a sad way to die with someone you loved. I smiled internally at the thought of loving Owen. I never thought I could love someone like how I love him. And just the thought of him being targeted to get me to my knees would be so painful for my part. I waited for his answers to my questions while I was on top of his chest, playing with his faint chest hairs. I giggle every time he says, ouch. Owen grabbed my hands and slowly kissed my fingers, one by one. After he finished kissing each of my fingers, he gave me the answers to my questions. I'll do it just let me come with you okay? You're not alone anymore. I smiled and I sat up in bed, giving Owen a full view of my perky chest. He whistled in appreciation while I giggled like a schoolgirl. I got out of Ben and unconsciously winced at the sharp sting coming from my lady bits down there. Owen appeared out of nowhere, and he scooped me up in his arms as we both head into the bathroom to take a shower together. My body was more relaxed after taking a hot shower and soaking in the hot tub while Owen massages every part of my body. And when I mean every part, I really mean every part of my body. We both got dressed before heading into the kitchen to cook up a quick breakfast for the both of us. I wonder what happened to the food I prepared last night for dinner. I checked the dining room and was surprised to see that the food was still untouched after a whole night out in the open. We decided to reheat the food I cooked last night for breakfast, then to let it go to waste and cooking again. While reheating the food, we talked about the things that had happened during the time I was staying at the inn. I told him all about Electra and her mother, about Scarlet Witch, 
and about the sluts that said shit about me, and Owen, and how they got humiliated in public by something they had done. The microwave pinged and we ate our breakfast, while I discuss Owen our game plan for the weekend. But before we talked strategy, I talked to him about how I found out who killed my parents, where we are going, and what connection it has to the missing pages of Annabelle's diary. I also told him about the assassin that was behind it all. Scarlet Witch. I told him that the last place I saw the assassin was in a cabin near the lake where Annabelle hid the page of her diary that was sealed in a bottle like all the others and was sealed again in a chest. Though I don't know if the Scarlet Witch is still there or not, and where Annabelle hid the page of her diary I mean, I've got to start somewhere, right? Owen nodded as he chewed his food. When we were done, we bought went back upstairs to prepare for the journey. If worse comes to worst, we'll need to camp. We brought everything we needed and more before heading out. It's better if we take a rental car for this journey, rather than use our own. It would be easy to track us down, if we use our cars. Though I'm not that concerned about my car Owen, doesn't need to know that. There are just some things that are better left untold. I also discussed the things that we are going to need to bring on the trip. Oh, I also made him wear a bulletproof vest, that was reinforced with a thick layer of Kevlar, while I wore my skin-tight black bodysuit that can stop a bullet short of grazing my skin. We have gone through so much that it was one of my favorite things to use during missions along with my daggers and bow and arrows. I also armed him with several guns and ammo. The guns were installed with silencers, and all of the ammo was drenched in poison that could kill ten fully grown men in mere seconds. Now, we're ready to go on a witch hunt. We left the house at roughly ten in the morning. Owen rented a car for our journey from a nearby car rental shop in town and drove us to the location given to me by Annabelle's parents. We killed time in the car by turning on the radio and singing along to the song. After several songs and stations later, something familiar to me played. One song by Little Mix came on and I sang along to it. When the song finished playing, Owen started to hoot in joy and appreciation for my singing. I don't even know if I carried a tune during the times I sang. I laughed at his reaction, because I think he's just doing it to not offend me. Whatever. I'd clap. But if I do that, we'd die from a car crash. I smiled and relaxed while listening to a bald that came on the radio. It was so soothing that I unconsciously slept. I didn't have any dreams. One minute I snoozed, the next minute Owen started to shake me awake saying that we have arrived at the entrance to the campsite. I rubbed the crusts that had formed on my eyelashes before getting out of the car. I stretched my sleeping body to wake it up before going to the back of the car to get my stuff, but Owen beat me to it. Apparently, he unloaded our stuff when we arrived before waking me up. I shrugged my shoulders. What the hell? I'll let him do what he wants for now. He's going to have to listen to me later anyway. I got my bag of weapons from him, while he carries his bag of weapons, and the other bags full of camping essentials. He insisted and I'm not going to back down the opportunity to rest my shoulders before a fight. I know that there is going to be a fight. That is a given. I just don't know if we'll find her here. I do hope so because I have no other leads besides this one. So, I'm betting everything that she is still here, if I want to know the truth about everything. About my parents, about Henry. About how I always lose the ones that are very important to me. And about Annabelle. I want to know how everything is connected. How Annabelle knew why I would be able to help her.
about how she even knew me in the first place. I started to cook up a backup plan, if ever this one fails. I thought of possible people that I could contact, so I could get an audience with her. Or maybe I could have Owen contact her so he could lure her out. But I think she already knows of the people that are close to me, so he's out of use for this one. Who do I know can I ask this favor for? Violet. No, she's being suspicious right now, and I don't want her to know anything about any of this. Bria. Definitely not. She already has information on her being a cop. Who else? Maybe Sean. I shake my head at the thought of asking him for a favor. He might taunt Owen. Who else do I know in town besides those people? I stopped in my tracks when a thought came to mind. L. Actra Simmons. She's the person I just need for the job. She also has a reason to help me, since the one I am trying to find is also the one who killed her mother. Yes. I can ask her the favor of contacting another assassin and asking for the contact information of Scarlet Witch. Now that I have at least that if ever we can't find her here. On to the other problem at hand. We arrived at the lake in question and I cursed loudly when I saw how vast it is. This is going to take a long time that we really do have to camp out tonight. I puffed out a huge sigh. Owen heard me sigh, and he walked up to me and hugged me from behind. Don't worry, I'll help you find it, okay? He whispered so softly in my ear that it made me purr and nodded at his words. It's true. I'm not alone anymore. Better start now while we still have sunlight to help us find it. On the other hand, Someone in the background is also making a grand scheme of their own design. The mistress. I've been sitting in this damned room with these two idiots for hours on end while they start arguing about our current situation. Being drunk and all. Why must you be hasty in your decision making Sandra? No, she is one step further in knowing the truth about everything. And did both of you know that she said she is an assassin? I literally laughed at her face. She said it with a freaking straight face. I can't believe her shiz nuts. I rolled my eyes at her. Tweedledee laughed alongside Tweedledum. They really are a pair of idiots. By the way, why did you contact that hag for protection from her? Sure, she could punch the hell out of someone. But is she really a threat? Ilectra asked me with a mocking tone to her voice. Oh, she is a threat. Something that even that hag can't handle if she was ambushed by her. And that hag knows it. So, please. Would the both of you try not to do anything stupid that could jeopardize our plan for her? The one where she is dead at the end and not us three. And I just want to remind you both that she is the root of our problems right now. They both sobered up and started to discuss other ways to execute the plan that we had thought of the moment she stepped foot into town. She was accidentally identified by that hag when she came here for a job from Sandra to finish of some bitch. She was insecure about because her brother liked her more than her. Well, we are practically in the same boat. That's why we were partners in these crimes of ours. We only want our brothers to our husbands, no one else. We first came to know this when I saw her bully her cousin, Annabelle. We bonded in a sick and twisted way because of that bitch. L. Ectra joined the gang when she first came to town, after she knew her mother died and a certain bitch that was supposed to be dead lived when her mother didn't. She confirmed this when we had an encounter with the hag, who was paid to kill her, and her family, and anybody who stood in her way. Sadly, her mother was one of those casualties. She didn't blame the hag, she blamed the bitch who lived. 
the beach that her mother chose over her. She is brimming with anger for Guinevere Snow, Akaya June Lane. Girls, be vigilant of your surroundings. I feel it in my bones and gut. Our opportunity is coming. It is just around the corner. This is going to be fun for all of us. After I said that, we all laughed our hearts out before toasting to the death of June Lane.